Boink. Are you happy with your booty? What kind of booty are we talking about? If, if I've been going to the gym or am I now a pirate? Cyber Monday booty. Oh, Cyber Monday booty, yes. I am quite happy, but what is this? It's protection for your RAM. Ah, protecting RAM. Speaking, speaking of RAM protection, welcome to the As Yet Undecided podcast with your Cyberine hosts, Mike and Sophie. Dick out for... No, 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 no. No? No. No, no, <laughs> no. Okay. Um, okay, so with that being said, um, I'm not this about hungry, so let's do a pretentious food corner. Okay, well, th- th- this pretentious food corner is brought to you by... Mini Toast from St. Luke. It's actually literally just um, toast <laughs> the size of your... What, you, what would this size be? It's like two centimetres by... Two centimetres by two centimetres. This toast... So yeah. small. It's for dolls. For breakfast. It's 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 more like toast in a doll's house. Yes. Um, or toasted um, communion communion bread. It's toasted communion bread. Yes. Do you have any um Vegemite? No, I do not have any yeast spread at the moment. Do you have any condiments? Um, no. Okay, we're just. Doing this dry. Dry boy. No butter. No butter. What are you, what have you been eating for breakfast? <sighs> Nothing really. This is like the smallest piece of toast I've ever seen. But it's only French on one side. Yeah. What is it? French toast is when you fry it on both sides. It's only fried on one side? Yeah. It looks like it's only fried on one side, not on French, both French as it was probably made in France or something. It's very underwhelming. Yeah. Literally, it's just toast. Yeah. Made in France. Okay. So, it's still French toast, in a way. So, um, that would be sandwiches for people on a diet. Yes. Yeah. So, like, um, yeah. So, so, so next time you come over, uh, next time I go over to your house, mm-hmm. can you make um, chicken, beetroot, lettuce, and cheese sandwiches on that bread, please? How? Can't you <laughs> <the beetroot? laughs> What? Do you want sandwich bites? Sandwich bites? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you literally, you literally serve hors d'oeuvres on this. It's so small. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's sort of like, um, you remember... The hedgehog birthday party? Mm-hmm. They would use that. Mm-hmm. So in saying that, we haven't had a pod pod in a while. No. A high artist. Due to exams. How were your exams, Mike? <laughs> well, I don't want to go into details legally. Mm-hmm. Um usually the best way I can describe it is there's a swear word, mm-hmm. and before that is a cluster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but in saying that, um, the best way I can describe it at this point in time is yes. that I am closer. Mm-hmm. So, which means theoretically, I am a part time student. Yay. Technically. Mm-hmm. Technically. Um, yeah, at the moment, but it just determines how much of a part-time student I will be. Would I be half a part-time student? Quarter of a part-time student? No, no, you know, it's, a, it's at least, a, a, at least half. Mm. Because, um, co-op is a 30-point paper. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And that's the, uh, technically, only paper that I need to do... At the moment, but depending on what happens, yes, if I need to add another paper or not. I see. Yeah. I still have not got my law results yet. They should be up tomorrow. So are they part of the TEU, I assume? No. Well, one of them is part of the TEU. The other one isn't, I don't think. So if you don't know, the TEU mm-hmm. 
or the Tertiary Education Union, yes. had a strike over pay issues. But not over their pay, it's over someone else's pay. In a nutshell, yeah. Who's um, pay? The big dispute was over contract workers. Mm-hmm. And they wanted them to earn at least a living wage, mm-hmm. which in New Zealand's uh, metrics is now twenty eighty five an hour. Hmm. Um, so th- that's completely understandable. But I kind of think that speaking with members of the TEU, mm-hmm. that it was sort of like um, a contract with Equity First. Mm-hmm which is the New Zealand organisation that looks after the, the, you know, that is in charge of the living wage. Mm-hmm. They sort of like put a note underneath with the TEU representatives and put this idea to them. Slightly underhand, but it's nothing untoward. Yeah, correct. Mm. And, um, and, you know, from, you know, I brought that suggestion to, the, you know, some of the members of the TEU and, say, and they said, yeah, that's pretty much how it went. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. Mm, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and especially when we're talking about sociology, which is my forte. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they can sort of understand where I'm coming from and you know yes and you, you would have found out when you came in to visit how um how informative I am in politics oh yep yeah. because we ran into the interim CEO of the YWCA Auckland mm-hmm. and you know because I am a resident that we sort of know know each other on a on a personal basis yes and bringing up stuff that happened this year in regards to um, equality and um, gender equality, for that matter. Mm. And the YWCA is brought on something that's very similar to the rainbow tick called the gender tick. Ah, yes. Just to Mm. say that we approve that. Gender equality and for this particular organisation. So how do they um, measure that? I think there is some sort of an acceptable level of sexism. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. There must be a you know you you understand that there is well no matter what there's always going to be um, some sort of inequality. Yes, you accept that. Um, you, you know, purely based on non-gendered qualities. Ah, oh, yep. So you, you know, take for example. Um, I, I, well, I wouldn't think it would be that much to do with race, more in regards to experience and qualifications only. But, I hope. Yeah, 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 we hope. We hope, but we, we always know that's not always the case. Yeah, correct. So, you know, that's why, you know, I would think that there is sort of an acceptable leeway in regards to that. Possibly around about 2%, I would think, would be acceptable. Because we're all learning and we're all trying to improve. We're still trying to get there. Yeah. Cause, Slowly. Because at the moment, um, the inequality is about 13%. Oh, yikes, Mike. At the moment. That's pretty harsh. Um, so, you know, you could say that all women are working for free from now until the end of the year. I'm buggered. Yeah. Um, and, and some companies have even gone to equal or just below that. Oh, yes. Um, if, if we're talking about the service industry, uh, you know, like banks and all that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. it's still at about 6% from the numbers that I've seen. So, you know how working with averages, right? If you have a ver- if you have some low numbers, where are the high numbers coming from? Which industries have, are the most unequal? Now... <sighs> Evidently far above 13%. If we have numbers such as six percent in most industries, yeah, 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 that, that's correct. And I can give you an honest answer. Um, most industries that include, or that that are labour intensive, oh yes, there is a huge disparity in that fact. So, like building, yes, building, farming, um, even meat works for that instance because it is very labour intensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and companies that 
uh, male dominated that you know that include those three mm-hmm. um, and and especially in um, large companies that don't really that uh, operate on the old boys network well I, I, well you can say that but I would think the the bigger one would be where they think um, <laughs> overheads are expendable mm. that's the best way to describe it does that make sense no Oh, it's sort of like they don't care about their employees. Oh, they don't. Oh! <laughs> yeah. That's always nasty. Yeah, I know. So so they kind of, you know, it is, you know, when you work for a large amount of, when you work for a large company, yes. you kind of realise that at the end of the day you are expendable. To them? Yeah, to them. Until you leave. Yeah. Which is very sad. Hmm. That's of course. Those companies can't exist without their employees, so why treat them like nothing? Why not treat them like resources? Most tertiary based companies are, are getting that way mm-hmm. um, and sort of have that collaborative environment. Yes. But unfortunately, um, that comes with a large amount of exploitation. Oh. So the exploitation of ideas. Where you would get pushed out even though your ideas are regularly being used or you're not being correctly compensated for coming up with those ideas. Yes, it's always the problem of, of intellectual property, right? Yes. I mean, I've heard one time that any ideas drawn by Disney artists are actually automatically owned by Disney, not the artists themselves. Correct. Yeah. So you go, oh yeah, I'm I'm working for Disney, but you sort of understand the the bottom line. Okay. You're now owned by Disney. Yeah, um, and also to that fact, especially what's been going on at the moment, because DreamWorks got brought out by Universal. Really. Right. So they are rehashing or redoing. Yes. All of DreamWorks. Um, past successes. So there's going to be another Shrek now? Yes. Oh my god! So it's technically called, they had a trailer for it a couple of days ago, called Shrek Reimagined. So Universal's basically, oh great, DreamWorks isn't really, is now going to go down the Google. They're running, are they running out of ideas or just becoming too lazy? Yeah, it's, it, it, they are becoming too lazy and it's and it's, you know, it's a quintessential problem that we have where um, we buy something, we exploit it to death, yeah, and then we'll wait until someone else buys that property again. Yeah. Sort of like why Fantastic Four suffers. I know. But, you know, I find Pixar is actually quite does a really good job of actually generating new ideas. I mean, you hardly see any sequels, do you? No, no. Um, only if it's a well-loved entity. Very, very well-loved. Um, Such as The Incredibles. And we only got that sequel like 20 years later. Yeah, yeah. It took a while. Um, I, w- I will say I'm kind of hesitant on Toy Story 4. Mm-hmm. But in saying that, I was very hesitant on Toy Story 3. And that was well made. That was well done. Mm-hmm. That That's how a sequel should be done. Mm. Sort of like you don't realise that they're making a third one. Yeah. But, you know, the sort of storyline makes sense. Yes. That being... So, with that being said, do you think you might watch The Incredibles 2? Or did you not like The Incredibles... Not like The Incredibles in the first place? I did, I did like the concept of The Incredibles in the first place. Yeah. Um... Good premise. Mm. When you realise that the bad guy was a misinterpretation of what happened 20 years ago, Mm -hmm. that was sort of a good idea and premise. Mm. Um, 
I, I kind of have a soft spot for Jack Jack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and Edna. Oh my god. <laughs> Favourite character ever. Yes. Edna Moe. <laughs> and yes. Yeah, but you, you know, she, she kind of felt like um, she she was a post World War Two survivor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what mini as grandmother? Yeah, uh, I know. G- German grandmother. Mm. Um, I mean, she'll come up to your what knees? Yes, <laughs> like most people these days. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, I'm waiting for the but. Well, well, I will see it because I don't know the storyline. But, you, you know, when, when it comes a part of... When, when you use it in examples in everyday life, mm. that's when you know that you've got a good... Um, when, when you've got a good entity. Mm. When, when you compare me and a Swift to Mr. Incredible, <laughs> driving in a car, you kind of got, you know, you're onto a winner there. <laughs> and, and you'll see me in a, in a white Swift going like, oh, really? You're driving that car? Yeah. How do you even fit in without smashing the roof off? Yeah, it's... Let's just say it's a tight fit. Yeah. Not the gut and the wheel tight, but the gap between the end of the seat... Yeah. ...and the, and the pedals. I know. <laughs> what? That means that you can use your fingers to do the pedals now. It's such, 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 <laughs> such, yeah. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Well, you can use the tummy. Like, you know, you just oh. lean to the left to brake and lean to the right to accelerate. Take it back now, y'all. <laughs> Two hops this time. <laughs> um, but in saying that, a lot has happened recently as well. Mm. Stitches, stitches are out. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I don't have to snitch anymore. Mm. I've already got. I already had the stitches to prove it. Mm. Where? I, I I had stitches to prove it. Mm-hmm. But now they're gone. Aww. Yeah. Why is there a big X on your on your forehead? Now the big, uh, well, you wouldn't know. Actually, no, you wouldn't have seen me just last night. No. Um, it was the X to say, which eye are we operating on today? <laughs> Imagine they operated on the right, on the wrong eye. Yeah, well, yeah, um, and yeah, that's pretty much how it went. Mm-hmm. So, which eye are we operating on today? Pointed to this eye, and they put a felt tip pen on them. Yeah. And considering that I haven't had a shower since then, so I'm like, the mark's still there. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. When are they getting the eye patch? Um, the next time I will have an eye patch is... It'll be the operation on the left eye. That'll be the next time I get a patch. Would you, like a, would you speak like a pirate thing? Mm, oh, I didn't... The last time I came out of the transplant. Yes. Oh, yeah. It would have been the transplant the last time I had a patch. Um, speak like a pirate. Yeah, it would be, be funny if I do it exactly on uh, Talk Like a Pirate Day. Oh, I know. So when is Talk Like a Pirate Day? Um, it's already been. It's right about June, July, I think. Oh, pussy. And, and considering that I completely forgot International Pickle Day, I kind of feel bad. Don't worry about it. But you want the pickle. It was I that's supposed to have remembered, not yeah. you. Yes. You are not the pickles. I'm pickles. I am the original pickle. Yeah, and considering that we saw the cutest dog ever. Uh, which one? The one that we rubbed down yesterday. Oh my god. Rosie, I think. Rosie, you know? yes. Yeah. Tiny little white thing. Yeah. She could easily fit in your hand. I know. I, I feel like having one of those zip-up hoodies where I can put the dog in the middle of it. No, you don't need a zip-up hoodie. You just need a hoodie. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. But, but, stick but, Rosie in there. So like, zip. Put Rosie in there. Oh, yes. Yeah, so the, you mean like a... Little like a kangaroo, pouch. Little kangaroo pouch. Yes. But you want a little fox terrier, right? Or... Well, well, it doesn't matter. Just any sort of old dog would be fine. Just any small dog. Yeah. Why do you like small dogs? I've always had, like, because, one, I've had small dogs, and two, I've been bitten by big dogs. And <laughs> three, you want a baby. Yes, I want a baby. So a dog is your, now your baby. Maybe because, you know, it's a, it's a good idea of where you see yourself later down the line. Yeah. You either own dogs or you have kids or you have both. Well, yeah, or you have cats. Can you have cats and children? Yeah. Um, I don't, based on experience, mm-hmm. I don't suggest, well, you know, there's an age limit. 
I don't accept that you have newborns and cats in the mm-hmm. same place. Something's bound to happen. Mm. Because you know who's gonna who's gonna go first? It's gonna be the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Any sort of pet in any sort of newborn don't work. Well, what if you already have a pet and suddenly suddenly you're pregnant? <sighs> it depends on who's sick. Okay. Um, and, and, and yeah, you know, old cats and old dogs will be fine. Um, yeah. But, you know, when you're getting young dogs and kids and sick dogs and kids, it doesn't work. No. Everyone gets sick. Yeah. Um, like, we, ha- we had to put a dog down because it was sick Aww. and playing with the kids. So you kind of, you know, you, you kind of worry that the dog's going to bite or scratch the kid. True. I mean, was, was it, weren't you bitten by a dog one time? Yeah, I was. But... In a very embarrassing area? Yeah, but, you know, I was 14 at that time. Yeah. And it's it was dumb because they left the gate wide open. Yeah. Dog came out, bit you in the... Bit me in the bum. Yes, which, which chic. What am I doing? Uh, I'm pretending that I'm on a bike. Yeah. And trying to figure out where the house is and where the dog came from. Yeah. It was the left. It was the left. Why didn't why didn't you turn the other cheek? No, Sophie, just no. Yeah. Just no. Okay. Yeah. It's kinda of hard to turn the other cheek when you're on a bike. I see. So the dog thought you're like a big giant chicken or something. Yeah, because I was also biking at the same time. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm very sorry to hear that, so that's why you don't want the big dog anymore. Correct. You want tiny little papa. Yes. And, and also messes are more convenient to clean out. Oh, I see. Because small dog, small messes. Yes. Okay. Now, actually, that, that reminds me, maybe we should actually talk about Cyber Monday swag. Yes. And what did you get, Sophie? I got, um, look behind you. Mm-hmm. It's that big, black, thick thingy. If it... <laughs> I'm not going to say you say anything more based on what you just said. It's the power bank. Yeah, but you said... Big, black, thick thingy, which is otherwise known as the power bank. Yes. You have a naughty mind. Get or, over it. Also known as a dirty mind. This is a dirty mind bank. Yeah, yes, you have a very dirty mind. <laughs> yes, out of it. It's a power bank. It's big, black and thick. Yes. That's what she said. Yes. <laughs> 12,000 milliamps. Yes. And it was only ten dollars. Twelve dollars. Are you happy with the with the PTO also? Yes, I'm very happy. Mm. It's got power. It's got power, go book. And it's got light. It's got an LED light. All I wanna do is up a zoom 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 and a boom boom. Nice. And then you shake your rump. No, you shake it. You got you got with the rump. I've got, mm. I don't have a rump. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a famous song. Mm. Sophie, um, and for me, I I asked Sophie mm. for a non-negotiable low interest loan. Yeah, you mean zero interest loan? Yeah, I said like, I, yeah, of extra RAM with extra speeds. That reminds me. Um, I'll basically give you this. Just yes. a receipt. Yes. So as you know, that I was honest with the price and things. Ah, okay. Now you know what to pay me. Yes. And now I know why you were charged extra. Because of the payment method. Yes. Extra, like, 0.41%. Yes. Well, as the result of the new RAM, tell us about the new RAM and... No, sorry. Tell us about the old RAM, then tell us about the new RAM, and tell us how it can be used my computer. Now, the new RAM... Mm-hmm. Uh, the yeah, the old RAM was a uh, single channel, twenty four hundred RAM. So the baffles of the anus. Yes, um, and now it is a dual channel. Yes. Thirty two hundred RAM, mm-hmm. sixteen gigabytes, which which most 
gaming outlets use yes. for benchmarking. Yeah. Because it is a Ryzen system. Yeah. Which um, part of the Infinity fabric means that it, you the, the perform you get a, a performance upgrade the higher speed you get. Yeah. Which in this case is quite substantial. Mm. You basically doubled your, doubled your RAM and sped it up, so what's stopping you now from trouncing my computer superiority? Now, <laughs> over time, maybe. Over time. Over time. But by the time you your computer matches my computer, it'll be time for me to upgrade too. Probably. And then I'll be like, oh, see ya. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and for me, I, I, I wouldn't mind when, when it gets to that point. Yeah. Because um, what what was released today, um, the PS5 specs were released today. Okay, let's see what they are, PS5, PS5 specs. Do you know what they are? Um, they're using a 8-core um, an eight core Ryzen CPU. Yeah. Um, which is the one that I'll be using later on. We have to use the other computer mic. Yeah, but it's okay. I know the specs anyway. Okay, tell us about the specs. So, 8-core? Yeah, 8-core. Um, and it'll have 20 CUs. 20? Compute units. Computer units. Yes, which for my APU uses 11 currently. Okay, right. Um, DDR5? Probably not. Okay. Because that's not due out until when the PS5 is released. That's really awkward. Yeah, it is awkward. Um, so yeah, but like by the time they delay the PS5 releases of this one, but so they can get the DDR5 in. Um. Or can they do like a sneaky, sneaky deal with the? No, no, because you want to keep costs down but profits up. Oh, I see. So and, and... DDR4 will do for the moment. Yeah, um, and if you're talking about speed of DDR5 currently, under testing, mm? it's about five thousand two hundred. Right. Yeah. But it's quite substantial. Mm. Um, and the current price is about twelve hundred dollars. Oh, that's a bit much. Exactly. Yeah. But you you know, you sort of like paying phone prices for console prices. Oh. So, um, any others so what's the gig for the RAM? For PS five? Um I wouldn't know at this stage, but I wouldn't be surprised. If it would be 16. And what, still, can it still support um, Blu-ray or is it no disc? Ooh, I don't know. Um, especially with the um, Xbox One announcement. Is, are they compl- going completely in the cloud? If what? so, what's the memory? I mean, no, no, not memory, the storage. What's the, what's the storage then? Um, the, the storage would be have to be at least two. It'd have to be at least two or a mixture. Terabyte. Two terabytes. Yeah. Um, okay. No doubt it'll probably be exactly what we have. Yeah. And have an SSD for the operating. Mm. And all of the other stuff onto the big disk. Yes. Um, yeah, Microsoft is doing that starting next year, having it diskless. Oh, yeah. Um, but that means it'll drive the price down to about $200. Why is that? Because... Because you don't have to pay for a disk drive. Oh, that's very helpful. Um, but they're only doing it for the Xbox One rather than the One X. So what's the difference between the Xbox One and the Xbox One X? A lot more cores and VRAM. I see. So it can run better. Yeah, so like you're thinking about uh, 1080p, 30Hz, ultra settings. Oh, for the One X. No, for the One X, it's 4K, 30 FPS, ultra settings. Oh, I see. So that's the difference between 1080 and 4K. Yeah. With that being said, do you see something about ray casting and how it basically tanks the No, I'm, ta- I'm talking about the RTX yeah. new system, the, tw- the 2080, the 1080 Ti and the 1070. Ray tracing is... It's real-line ray tracing, which means... Um, basically taking a light source in real time. 
Oh, right. So, you know, taking something like the sun and having shadows on that, depending on where the light source is. Yeah. And that, and, you know, that goes into anything. Water, um, mirrors, glass in the car, etc. And getting those same reflections. Okay. Um, currently, at the moment, on medium, on, on low settings, it's about half, it cuts half FPS. Okay. So on, on titles like Battlefield 5, a 1080 Ti would be running normally without ray tracing at about 120 FPS. Yeah. Now that's down to 60. Oh, yes. And with ultra ray tracing, it takes it from 120 to 30 FPS. Yikes, that's huge. Mm. So what's the point of ray tracing then? Can you turn it off? You can turn it off. What's the point of ray tracing then? Does it actually make it look prettier? Yeah, it makes it look prettier. Seriously? Yeah. Prettier? So I would think if you want to do ray tracing... Yes. Do it in the single player, don't do it in the multiplayer. Do it in the single player, do it with two two graphics cards? No, 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 no. No, dude, just... It, it, that doesn't really matter on that front. Okay. Be, because, you, you know, it's more... You, you're admiring the prettiness while you're doing everything. Oh, I see. Yeah, but, you know, you know, on competitive multiplayer, turn it off. So with that being said, um, do you think it's, do you think ray tracing is only um, viable slash worth it if you have the twenty eighty or is it just um, <laughs> ten eighty still do? Um, b- because you won't have tr- a ray tracing in the ten series. No. Right. Um, and considering that it is a concept. Yeah. Um, I would think at the moment don't buy into it. No. Only if you really want to. Only if you really, really want to see the prettiness. Yeah, you, because, you know, if you think about ray tracing and buying a system yeah. to cater for that, you're thinking about five grand. Maybe it's not worth it yet. Yeah, exactly. That's why I think it's now a concept that later down the line... That could be incorporated into... Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it could be... What's the chances that ray tracing will actually become popular and not just fall by the wayside, such as with 3D? Now, yeah, that's that's the sort of tricky argument that you have to put there. Yeah. And, and, you know, I would even put VR in that sort of perspective as well. So VR is getting out of fashion? Well, it is. Um, There's a difference between um, actual progression and dalliances with fashion. Yes. So. Um, and, and then you have to talk about um, the amount of games that would accept ray tracing. Mm. Um, I will say the launch was pretty not great, mm. um, especially with the new Windows update, because you needed the new Windows update in order for ray tracing to be enabled. Yes. Um, so that was pretty tricky. Um, but if you know if the popularity is there, mm. then I don't see how it can you know it can be fine. And what's the opinion on Bloom? On what? Bloom, in terms of lighting. Um, yeah, it works. It works. Yeah? yeah. But do you think some, you can, you, some games over Bloom? Yeah, probably due to the exaggerating nature of what games are, Yeah. essentially. Because you have to have some sort of exaggeration in there. I see. But, you know, in any sort of media, that there's, there's always sort of some sort of over-exaggeration. Such as stereotypes, characterizations, yeah, it, colour. It, yeah. I mean, anime is a genre to over-exaggerate everything, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, you, you, you know, you, you have to accept it. Like, if you go into a fictional movie, yes. you sort of accept some sort of the exaggeration. Such as the, um, okay, J.J. Abrams loves to use this effect. It's like, it's like flashing lights all the time. Like, yeah. What's it called? Yeah, he's got a, he's got a big fan of that. But big never, fan of what? What's it called? I don't know what it is, but it's like flashing lights. I get it. Yeah, I have flashing lights. Yep, J.J. Abrams, a huge fan of, um, lens flare. Yeah, lens flare. He's a, yeah, so it's like, oh, it's like star here, star there, star there, star there, star there. Stars in your eyes. Star wipe. Star wipe. It's not, it's not called Star Trek. It's not called Star wipe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you could see, you know, 
um, let, let's take a minor one, and I talked about this to you yesterday. Yes. About the movie First Man, about the Apollo 11 mission and Neil Armstrong. Oh, yeah. That's not quite being realistic. I know, that, like, they miss, you know, they didn't do one part of the story. No. But, you know, it made it seem um, highly emotional, putting it in there for the for the viewing public. Yes. So, you know, that sort of exaggeration can be interpreted. Based on a true story. Yes, that's why... It's not, this is a documentary, this is based on a true story. This is how we interpret stuff happened. Yeah. Um, that's the same thing with The Social Network, right? Yes. Um, directed by David... Oh, damn it. Lynch, I think. David Lynch, yeah. yeah. Starring Jesse Eckelberg? Eisenberg. Eisenberg. So um, that that hacking scene, yes, um, that that you know it could have been along those lines, but could have been real, but it really wasn't. Yeah, it's it's like a realistic depiction of what could have happened. Yeah, but it really, it wasn't what happened. Yeah, let's just say that the hacking the hacking party would have happened. The alcohol would have happened, but the crowd no probably wouldn't. So they did it for dramatic effect. They did it to and and spot and to encapsulate the atmosphere, the feeling of the time, but they did not make it realistic. Yeah. The, no. Do you think they made it realistic in a way? Um, they made it exaggerated. Exaggerated. Okay. Yeah. They exaggerated it, but um, cut down on the frills, and maybe you'll get something that's close to documentary. Yeah, you be you know you have to weigh between. Um, what can we get away with plus money? Yes. And do you think that some of those nature documentaries that over, over-dramatise the scenes a bit? A little bit, yeah. Um, so when does documentary become just merely a film? When do they stop becoming the truth? <laughs> you, you are all... Well, let's just say... Um, this is the reason why reality TV works. But reality TV isn't quite reality TV. Exactly. That's exactly my point. It is It is capturing a snapshot. As about as, 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 as exaggerated as Kim Kardashian's bottom. Yes, it's sort of like... It's Kim, Kim Kardashian is the one with the gigantic derriere, right? Yes, yes. You, you, you can ask for a bottle of milk and a lotto ticket in that dairy. Yes. <laughs> so, and, and, like, and the thing that always gets me about nature documentaries, it's fine. Mm. But when you put, but when you're starting to, you know, have that beautiful scenery and all that sort of stuff, that's sort of like, okay, I see what you're doing. And, and then, like, even a narration change to someone who's famous. But, David Attenborough, is he too famous to do nature? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm meaning other people. Like, like, take for example... Oprah Winfrey. Oprah yeah, yeah, Winfrey you know, always seems to replace David Attenborough when his documentaries are aired in the US. So, like, Oprah Winfrey doing it like that. Um, Gordon Freeman and March with the Penguins. Oh, yes. Um, you, you know, you sort of... Okay, we're getting this person purely because of his voice. And I find this a little bit troubling when they start getting those animals' names and storylines, too. Yeah, because it's, because it's given you an emotional attachment. Yeah, like emotional attachments to something that you, pro- you probably shouldn't have an emotional attach- attachment to. Yeah. Because they're like total strangers. Yeah, exactly. You never get to see them. Yeah, yeah, and that's probably why I don't get why people get a little bit um, giddy when they see a famous person. Yeah, it's like, it's just people, mate. Just let them be. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like r- running into people besides Sky City. I'm like, yeah. You know, you know, they're humans and just want to enjoy life as everything else. It's yes. just that they're just lucky. Are we human? Oh, are we dancer? Well, why, why are you bringing up the killers now? It's relevant. Why? 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 It's relevant. So, Sophie, you need to go to the karaoke bar or get Sing Star or something. Ah, oh, yes. Signs are vital. Our hands are cold. And with that said, I think we should probably stop this podcast before we hit the po- copyright issues. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, so, this has been... 
the As Yet Undecided podcast, in which we cannot decide whether Sophie's singing is terrible or not. No, no, no. We know it's terrible. We know it's yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah, but what degree of terrible is it? Yes, I know. Well, email us your answer, your opinions. At as yet undecided at gmail.com. No, as yet undecided podcast at gmail.com. There you go. Or at AYU podcast at AYU podcast. Please stop, Mike, from <laughs> crying at <laughs> the sadness of my voice. Do I have just... my earmuffs? Yes or not? 